What's up everybody, my name's Shance and today we're going to be playing Gideon's Sacrifice or Part 5 of the War of the Spark Chronicles event. Um, nonetheless, it's going to be Ravnica, so we can bring our own deck with only cards from Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, and War of the Spark, and Gates of Blaze is banned. So what we're going to be playing today is Liliana's Undead Army, um, and pretty much as the name implies, we're going to be playing Liliana and then uh, maybe not so many zombies. But we're playing things like Priest, Cruel Celebrant, so... And then Liliana herself can get down zombies, God Eternal Ketra can get down zombies, so... There is a lot of undead uh, mischief going on with this deck. And one thing I would like to go ahead and note, uh, starting out with this event, uh, you're going to see a hell of a lot of Demir control decks. I don't know why, but they are very, 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 very popular in this event and very, very, very annoying. So if you run into them, you know, it is what it is. We may run into one or two here. Um, just know that, yeah, it, you're probably going to have better luck and a quicker route to victory going to mirror control um, because the cards available are just fucking bonkers for that uh, color scheme, right? However, uh, we're, we're not like that. We're here to have some fun, which brings me to my next point. So, everybody that enjoys the video, be sure to leave a like down below and a comment in the comment section if you have any suggestions for this deck, future decks, or past decks. And if you're uh, if you're new here, consider subscribing. We try to play more fun things than, uh, than what's the other word? Competitive. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, and before we do hop into the deck tech or deck breakdown, I would like to remind everybody we are partnered with TCGplayer.com. So, any of those looking to help support the channel can head over there and use the promo code the new Dr. Spillican and uh, proceeds will help go towards the channel. So kicking us off, we have three copies of Hunted Witness, um, Sacrifice Fodder, right? It's a, it's a great chum blocker. Orzov Enforcer, even better chum blocker and uh, you know, okay, Sacrifice Fodder as it does give you another creature still and that creature is flying so it might help you defend against flyers. Uh, very, very fringe situation but it could happen. Um, two copies of Priest of Forgotten Gods, and if you have more, by all means, throw them in. I only have two copies, and I don't plan on picking up any more copies, at least anytime soon, considering the next set is going to be dropping very soon. So, Moving us down, we have four copies of Cruel Celebrant, a card that is just so awesome, just so fun as well. Um, Cruel Celebrant, definitely one of my favorite uh, cards to come out from War of the Spark. It is just so, so awesome. We have Teo in here to protect our faces from all of those you know, all those demure assholes who keep trying to thought erasure us and all of that fun stuff. Um, Teo is going to give us a little bit of defense against that, giving us hexproof, as well as giving us some more sacrifice fodders with the 0 3 white wall creature tokens. Um, and then, furthermore, those creature tokens can usually defend the things that, you know, Priest of Forgotten Gods, Cruel Celebrant, uh, Hunted Witness can't. Orders of Enforcer is good to defend against everything except for First Strikers. So. Moving us down, we have three copies of Midnight Reaper. This is going to help us get out even more card draw, card draw, I'm sorry, on top of the Priest of Forgotten Gods, on top of the Liliana, so just just excellent, in my opinion. Sure, you're going to take one damage, but uh, you know, as long as you're managing yourself, you shouldn't die, because you do have Cruel. You do have the tokens from Hunted Witness, so you have ways to gain life with this deck. We have Soren, so. Moving us down, we have four copies of Mortify, and uh, this is good gonna be removal pretty pretty straightforward there um, one copy of Oath of Kaya to keep our planeswalkers protected as well as dealing damage back to our opponent if they try to attack them um, again only have one copy of Oath if you have more play it uh, another card that's not in the deck that would be fantastic is Spark Harvest if you want to try and make a little bit of room for that by all means you can you can take out something like Ethereal Absolution for sure um, maybe a copy of Tasa is three might be too many um, but yeah, Spark Harvest. Excellent, excellent card to come out from War of the Spark. Anyways, moving us down. We have two copies of Seraph of the Scales, and again, just all around good for our deck. Great sacrifice fodder as it gives us two creatures if we just really need it. Needs it. Um, sorry. One black mana, and we can use Death Touch, and it has flying. One white mana, it has vigilance. This card is just, you know, fucking awesome. It is mythic, so if you don't have it, don't go, you know, don't go buying it unless you have just a lot of love for Orzov. It is a fantastic card, but this deck shouldn't be the reason that you pick them up is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, so yeah, as I already mentioned, we have three copies of Soren, which is, again, one of my favorites. Orzov, really, this color scheme just dropped an, an awesome, awesome onslaught of cards from War of the Spark. 
Uh, moving us down, Tesa um, doubles every time we have a creature dying, doubles the effect that gets triggered from the creature dying. So double card draw off Liliana, double card draw off Midnight Reaper, double token spawned off Hunted Witness, um, double token spawned off uh, Orzhov Enforcer. So yeah, Tesa, just just an awesome card. Most of y'all should know her by now. Got to turn her Oketra. Again, this is going to give us some some zombies as we're trying to play an undead army so trying to stick true to our nature as well as those zombies are very easy sacrifice fodder they're four fours and if you have Tasa down they're four fours with lifelink uh, and vigilance which is fantastic but if you still need the the sacrifice you know hey they're not they're not real creatures you can always replenish them so uh, moving down we have two copies of Liliana the Dreadhorde General which you know hey she's the picture for this deck she's in the name of the deck she is sort of our centerpiece you know I love Liliana again fantastic card to come out of War of the Spark there are a lot of good cards that I love in War of the Spark there are just a few that made the game very difficult to enjoy sometimes um, and then last but not least we have Ethereal Absolution a card that came out in Ravnica Allegiance that uh, is just fun right if you can get it down it's it's just fun to have so that's gonna do it for our deck tech or deck breakdown and now we're gonna hop right into some matches or set gonna be our our first foe for the day. Um, Hunted witness, cruel celebrant, Soren. Yeah, seems seems good. We have split land, so probably will go ahead and shock in the godless run. Um, okay, triple cruel celebrant is fantastic as well. Yeah, now if we can just get like you know some more some more white mana, Tesa. Um, maybe maybe a priest I wouldn't be complaining if we got a okay well yeah there's that we're not gonna play the priest yet um, oh or actually maybe we should have went ahead and played the priest since now is the lowest pro possibility of uh, anything happening maybe not chromatic lantern hmm hey there's another planes um, I wish we had some kind of combo play this turn, but we don't, so we're just going to go Priest. Next turn, we'll probably go double Cruel Celebrant, so we should be set up pretty well, right? Because if they kill one of our creatures, they're going to take three damage from Cruel Celebrant right there. If we can get down a Tesa, they'll take six, which is fucking insane. Paradise Druid and Soul Diviner. <laughs> Alright, so double Cruel. Double on the cruel A. Um, and we could go ahead and use priest here. Do we want to though? Do we want to? Nah. I think we'll just save it for instant speed. In case they try to remove any creatures or any of that, then we can use priest to sacrifice the creatures that would be removed. Minus priest herself, because obviously if she gets removed, um, can't sacrifice herself. That, that's the beauty of having two priests down, really. Because if they go to remove one, you just use the other to sacrifice it, right? Alright, so Paradise is tapped. Finality. <laughs> okay. So we use Priest, they sack Paradise, and Soul Diviner gets really big and still gets to attack. Well, doesn't get to attack for a huge amount this turn. But that still does kill all of our shit, so... Let's go ahead and sacrifice these two. Oh, actually, maybe we should have double sacrificed Cruel Celebrant. That way, the token from Hunted Witness would have been left over. Yeah, that was a misplay. Because um, all my stuff is, you know, boom, gone. But we do already have them down to 10, so. And that just procced, uh, you know, a number of times. That I don't think it's 10, but 7, 8, something like that. We'll hit Resolve All. Eight. It was eight. Pass the combat. They can't attack. We throw this down, and I think we just go Soren, right? Soren, one damage to the face, and say do something, <laughs> because they can't kill Soren with their Soul Divoner. So they have to remove him, or that's game. Even if, oh, you know what? I'm really dumb. <laughs> I'm incredibly stupid. I could have just used Oath of Kaya there and won the game, huh? Ignore that comment section. Ignore that. 
I know before before my realization of what I could have done. I mean, luckily enough, we're still the winners, but that could have been terrible. If they had to gain life to put them above three, like that would have been absolutely awful. Oh well, we are the victors. So game one up against Orset, uh, a little shaky. I made some misplays for sure, as in like two two pretty big ones. Um, but we still came out with a victory, so yeah, feels good, man. Into uh, into a game two. Imperator, Imperator, Imperator. I don't know. I'm not gonna lie, I probably slept through most of Phonics. Those of you in the U.S. know what Phonics is. Uh, at least those of you in the U.S. that grew up in the '90s know what Phonics is. Those of you that haven't, which is probably the larger majority of the viewers, um, Phonics was uh, a program designed to help American students become better at enunciation and pronunciation and understanding our own syllables, if that makes sense. Because most Americans, you tell them to go look in a dictionary, and out where it tells you how to say the word, like me myself, we can't do it. We we don't know how. Um, so yeah, phonics was designed to try to counter that, right? That huge level of ignorance that is just all across America. Um, but it didn't work, as you can tell. Did not work. Alright, so that hurt. That hurt my soul, my face. That hurt everything, pretty much. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep Mortify around for the instant speed spell. Smackaroonie. We just have to make sure to do it before combat phase, otherwise that healer's talk is still going to get the mentor effects. So, that is a key little note there. But we do want to save it for their turn, just in case they play something. A Johnny's Pride Mate. Do we care more? Well, we have two Mortifies. We'll go ahead and resolve it, and let's see if... Okay, that is their, their last play. Well, let's go ahead and take out the Tajik. Ajani is going to get big, but we can manage the Ajani with our Oketra next turn. And turn after that, we should have... Well, there's another Mortify, so that's nice, I suppose. Um, I was going to say, turn after that, we'll have mana from Mortify, so... <laughs> yeah, things are... Things are going okay. I do like this Boros deck that I've seen thus far, though. I like the idea of using a Johnny's Prodmate Healer Hawk combo in a Boros deck. Not thrilled to see it used against me, obviously. Oh, why would they not attack with their Healer's Hawk? That makes me a little worried. Not terribly so, but a little bit. Um, I know I said I was going to mortify the Ajani, but the idea of getting down some zombies is way more appealing to me, so... Well, Imperator, just <laughs> just gonna scoop it. Okay, now I understand why they didn't attack. They'd lost all faith. As soon as they saw Oketra, they were like, well, if he plays a single creature, I'm out. <laughs> That's just how it goes sometimes. Alrighty, on to a game three. Adam is gonna be our next foe. Um, his hand, not so, not so fantastic. I mean, I like it. I would love for it to be okay. I guess we can keep it. Why not? Hey, it's actually exactly what we needed, right? Oh, there goes one of our Lilianas. So glad we could run into a Demir deck today. Again. That was sarcasm, by the way. I might get super salty during this match. <laughs> and by might, I mean I'm going to get super salty in this match. This this is definitely going to be our last one for the day. Um, this is just just too much fun for me to handle in one day. All of the Demir decks, like it's actually kind of kind of ridiculous the amount of Demir decks that I've seen today. It's like people that normally would hate control are even playing it. Narset, sure, sure. You know, there's nothing I love more than when my opponent just hits it, right? Just straight into the good stuff. Thought collapse. 
Well, here's the question. What do we want to get down before that thought collapse hits us? Probably the Soren. So we could start taking out their Ashiok and their Narset and all that good stuff. If Soren can can make it, right? If he can survive for a turn. But I definitely think that's the route to go. So Soren minus on the Teo plus two. Uh, let's go ahead and hit Narset for one. So if they use her next turn, it uh, won't matter. Then we'll go with the Ashiok. I don't think it really matters us attacking him with Hunted Witness as they should just defend with Wall of Lost Thoughts as they do. We're really just doing it for the life gain. Alright, so let's reorder this whole little fiasco of a hand around. So they do just go ahead and minus Narset. Okay. Jace. Oh, they're playing a mill deck, like full on. Alright, well, I mean, that's something. Go ahead and play Jace so that way you can't play your Thought Collapse. How about that? And then we can draw into a land and play Oketra and everything will be sunny. And for once, thing will, things will go in the opposite direction of the control decks. Or maybe not. Maybe that's just ludicrous to think. Entered the God Eternals and they chose to mill themselves. Okay. I mean, sure, you have a Jason hand, but uh, I don't. I still don't know if milling yourself is the right decision there. Okay, so they have no mana for a thought collapse. Let's uh, let's get down Tesa. And attack their Ashiok. And yeah, leave things as is. One more land, all we're really looking for, so we can get one of these two Oketras down. Well, one land and for them to be tapped on mana, realistically. So... Yeah, let's see what Adam has for us. Kind of a kind of a slow game, but I don't think I've ever seen a Samir player move quickly, so... Which, you know, sure, I get it, I guess. You have a lot of different plays, you don't know which one may be the right one, all that fun stuff. It's just a little bit more annoying for Demir because it usually happens to them around turn two. You know, they're like, oh, do I play the Thought Collapse or not? Um, to whereas other people, it's like turn ten when you actually have some mana and actually have some things to play with. I'm sorry, I, I bash on Demir and control players so much, but realistically, if you enjoy that style, you know, by all means, play it. Um, I may hate you for it if we run into each other and talk some severe shit, but, you know, to each their own. Have fun however you have fun. Go for it. Try to use your zombie. I dare ya. I double dog dare ya. Hey, another land, but you know what it's not? It's not another white source of mana. Drawn four swamps somehow. Some magical way. We've drawn into four swamps. Um yeah. Use a catcher. Let's get that Ashiok out of here. ASAP. Alrighty, so we have plenty of life. Our Soren is sitting pretty healthy. That's not to say that he couldn't just get spark, spark harvested, but uh, we're we're sitting okay. They do have an eight eight on the board, but you know, if I could ever get some some more white sources of mana, I could play that Oketra. Hell, I could even play Oketra into Oketra. My goodness, at the amount of chemistry's insights in this guy's deck. And they do nothing, so now is when they sit back with the Thought Collapse, which means I'm not playing the Seraph. Instead, I think I'll just plus two and tick them in the face with Soren. Um, they may be waiting until they get closer to play the Jace, right? Might be what they're trying to do. Then we're just going to skip. They're going to use Chemistry's Insight on the end of our turn and draw into a whole lot more cards and try and mill themselves, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's what they're going for. All right, come on, Adam. Ooh, they 
they discarded the Thought Collapse, so they have to have something else, right? They have to have another counter. <clears throat> Wall of Lost Thoughts, sure. They did it to themselves, sure. <clears throat> Alrighty, what comes next? Do we finally see the Jace? Or do they just save the mana for chemistry slash counter? Well, there's wall, so it's not counter. They're doing that on themselves, I'm thinking. Yep. Okay, so what do we need? We need a planes, right? We need to get this Oketra down and win this game. God damn it. <laughs> I was going to say, and win this game before things get out of hand, but apparently they have already gotten there. So... We are going to swing in like this. Gives us a little bit of life, gives us uh, a little bit of... Uh, I was going to make a joke there, but I guess I completely brain farted on the, the word I was looking for. Confidence. That's the word. Gives us a little bit of confidence. Anyways, I, I'm very tired, and I've went up against too many Demir players today. Too many for my liking, so. Adam, I'm going to request that you don't mill yourself, and we actually get to have a game here. Okay? Because so far, I haven't drawn exactly what I've needed, or really, you know, all that much of what I've needed at all. Hey, there's all my fucking planes in my exile pile. This fucker got rid of them. Alrighty, back to my turn. Who? That's what we wanted. Don't counter me. Hey, they didn't. Soar into the face. Sarah to the face. They only have 15 cards left. The chances that we're able to kill them before they're able to mill themselves is probably low. <laughs> we're going to need to amass a huge army huge 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 um, sure I mean if they want to place chemistry's inside at sorcery speed I'll, I'm all down 100% go for it another Ashiok huh They select themselves. They do. They do indeed. This is my masterpiece. This is their masterpiece. They say. All right, my turn. Another white mana. You know we have plenty of life, so this is what we're actually going to do. We're going to go ahead and play the Oketra. Yes. And since it's going to get removed from the board, we can choose if we want to put it back in our deck. I think we're going to decline it. On. Do get the card draw off of it. Um, Orzhov Enforcer is definitely better than Hunter Witness, so go ahead and throw that down. Soren. Oh, you know what? We should have taken Soren to the face. I didn't think about that. Okay, so we'll go that there. Uh, Oketra can't attack. So, gotta kill the Ashiok. Our Soren is at 18. The only thing we can get back is Oketra, so. You know, probably won't be doing that, but. We still don't have enough to kill him. You know, we, we got the army. We got the undead army we were looking for. But we still don't have enough to kill him. <laughs> Adam. Man, you are persistent. And it's not even that uh, they've been doing necessarily fantastic at controlling us. They did in the beginning. But towards the latter half, it was just the fact that we couldn't draw any... Uh, Draw any white mana. So, is this it? Is this going to be the GG? If they play Jace too early, they know I kill it. I just destroy it with Seraph. So, Seraph, I'm sorry. So there's Hunted. If I could draw into Priest or Cruel. Uh... 
maybe Tesa? I'm not so sure. Either way, those those two things would be fantastic. Priest or Cruel Celebrant um, could actually help. So next next we will swing in boom boom boom. Wait a minute, do we have anywhere near lethal with this? So four is guaranteed. And they definitely block Oketra if I swing in with Oketra. So that's four, that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, seventeen, eighteen. We have to do it. We have to swing all in. If we're going to have a chance at killing them, it's going to be now. Actually, we're not going to deal 18 because the wall of lost thoughts. So we are going to lose the Oketra. Um, not that I really care because like, we got, what, two more turns maybe left? So realistically, a big onslaught is our best chance. Um, still not going to do that great. Alrighty, pass. Sure. Yeah, we, we may not have had a chance anyways. Right, down to 14, we took out one of their creatures. Oketra, I mean, sure. I, I legitimately don't think we'll end up drawing back into a Ketra, even with the... God damn it. <laughs> the lands! Oh, well, I guess we could have put Vigilance on the Seraph there, but again, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to attack. They have no intention of it. So there's the Jace. Target player puts the top two and draws a card. That They're down to one. Well, I guess if they have any... Anything that draws two cards after this, then they're they're still set, right? Man, Adam, I gotta say, you weren't as annoying as most Demir control players, mostly because it seems like my deck controlled me harder than they did. Um, but at least it was fun. At least it wasn't just like, hey, I'm gonna control you until I can get down a... Hell, I don't know, a Thief of Sanity or a... a what's the big 6-6 six, six Trampler or 5-5 five, five Trampler in the sky? Man, I cannot think of its name now. I'm a step ahead. Something Whisperer? Doom Whisperer? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know if that's correct or not. Like I said, it, it's been a long day and I've uh, I've played a decent bit of matches against these Demir decks, so... Alrighty, Adam. Yeah, just finish your, finish your fucking turn, for fuck's sake. There we go. <laughs> So game one and two picked up fairly easily. Game three, I, it, it's Demir, you know. You can go face Esper and probably get the same feeling of getting kicked in the face. Um, but yeah, the the big unfortunate part with that game three is the fact that our deck just said said no to the white mana, and uh, you can play things once it's too late to really matter. So that's gonna that's gonna do it for today's video. Hope uh, hopefully y'all all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. And as always, I'll either see you later tonight or tomorrow. Peace.